find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters from the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to uh, recover completely from the holiday from the podcast, Pittsburgh and everything. I hope you enjoyed our, our live edition and our awkward camera angles. I don't know if you saw the picture of the uh, camera that was duct taped to Mountain Dew because I forgot a tripod. Uh, but we, we made it happen. We made it happen. Also joining me this week, he's my co-host for the week, is AJ Koftik from, I don't know, somewhere. So, somewhere with wired I'm, internet as we were discussing uh, I'm off in, air. I'm in... Uh. <laughs> Yes, I am. Uh, I I am currently. Hold on, I'm just going to show everyone this because it's amazing. Uh, I am currently utilizing the complimentary high speed internet <laughs> access. If you have, if you have, if you're on the audio, go ahead and seek this out. It's not very far into the video, obviously, uh, but go ahead and seek this out. It is a white Caraba marble base, as as it says here on the sticker. Uh, it's a white Caraba marble base. Uh, complimentary high-speed internet access, and all this does is it just holds the cable and keeps it from falling behind the desk because it, it's not very hard to take the cable out of it, as you can see. So, uh, yeah, I, it's I, I'm utilizing the complimentary high-speed internet access trophy for jokes. Uh, I am currently in Raleigh, North Carolina, where I used to live. I don't live there anymore. I live in Pittsburgh near Sorg, but uh, yeah. I, I, I still travel for work. Uh, I'm still well dressed. And uh, I'm going to talk about some nerdy things awesome. for you, the listener and awesome. viewer. Uh, real quick, it, it's been a, a little bit since, since you've been on. Remind people what your specialty is outside of uh, this podcast world and 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 hotels. Sure, uh, <laughs> I am a data center engineer. Uh, I do, as I like to tell people, I do cool things in loud rooms. Uh, <laughs> I do storage, compute, virtualization, cloud stuff. And uh, and people have recognized me as being apparently good at that and such. So uh, I, I go into loud rooms and I install very expensive equipment that helps run the internet. Awesome, awesome. Because I I, I, I want to bring that home because I, I you know we kind of stress that at PodCamp. Uh, the people when I decide who comes on here, uh, it, it it's somebody from our circles that is a, a geeky and B most of the time uh, does something in these fields you know i mean how many people you have on here that work in in journalism that are dealing yes. with these technical problems you obviously you're helping to run the internet apparently um or in the social media or web design or, or whatever i help i you. help try to build out the internet yeah, yeah it, I, I mean i i i use a lot of i mean i i i am a mobile person uh i don't know if sorg will post the picture of my my studio set up here uh where i have my laptop sitting on top of an, uh, of a hotel ice bucket to make the camera angle not so low. I can't at the um, moment, unfortunately, but it is pretty fantastic. Like, I'll tweet it totally out here out. later. Um, actually, I'll, I'll tweet, okay. I'll tweet just, it out. Just, me- just, no, just, men- just remember Ice Bucket and then a, a laptop sitting on top of it. And then, <laughs> use that yeah, Ice Bucket. Visual. Get, get, it, get um, some use out of it, right? The entire... Go ahead. Right, but the idea here is that when you have... When you're doing a podcast and you're having people on as guests on to talk about things you want them to be at least knowledgeable of the subjects because then if they're not knowledgeable on the subjects or at least sort of knowledgeable on the subjects uh it doesn't make any sense Mm -hmm. and it doesn't it sounds like you're just having your friends on to talk about stuff which is fine and fun because we're the sorg and i are very good friends but you want to make sure that there's also content there to to actually talk about so there there's shop talk there you go there you (laughs) go um and uh, if you are uh, new to the awesome cast, we do this here live every Tuesday about 6.30 p.m. Eastern time at live.sogertronmedia.com. That is a tentative time. Depends on the other shows we do. We do do six shows 
here every Tuesday. Uh, I, I technically do seven podcasts now every Tuesday, including my morning one. Uh, so uh, you can join us there. You can also check out awesomecast.net to find out this and other shows and a lot of our picks if we're talking about uh, things you can pick on up on Amazon. And by the way, thank you very much. I just got a report. It looks like a couple of you picked things up uh, through our links over at awesomecast.net. We get a little bit of kickback uh, that helps the show out. So if you're looking to get anything off Amazon or anything we particularly talk about on Amazon, uh, go click the links over there and give us a little something. If you, even if you just shop Amazon, please just go over and click uh, the link on the side, uh, just the gateway through that, and we get a little kickback for, for, for sending them that way. It's just a little way that you can support the show uh, a little bit monetarily. And you don't really have to do anything. Just do what you normally do on Amazon. Some of us are addicted to it, uh, especially people that listen and, and participate in this show. Uh, so that, that's just one little way you could do that. Uh, you can also communicate with us on Twitter at AwesomeCast. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and Google+. Plus with awesome cast or an awesome cast on youtube you subscribe to us on youtube itunes stitcher spreaker iheart radio in audio and video formats and please 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 if you get a chance this week leave us a comment on itunes even if you don't listen to us on itunes that helps everything else uh one thing i learned at PodCamp. uh so go check that out so let's get started with our awesome things of the week aj you got one we haven't talked about this one too much on the show i don't think uh but i'm, I'm guessing you had a, a uh, chance to kind of look into so, it uh a little bit more than a chance um so i don't have it so note note my uh, well let me I, I would like to do a quick side note uh the amazon thing the story is talking about please one go do that too if you were a resident of north carolina you can't do that oh no Oh, yeah. the, the affiliate doesn't I wanted work. to do it. I wanted to do it a long time ago. Yeah, you can't do the affiliate program if you live in North Carolina. Uh, you can click through. So if you live in North Carolina, you're listening to this show, you want to buy something, support this show, great. You can go through the link to buy things. But if I wanted to host an Amazon affiliate thing as a resident of North Carolina, I can't do that. Um, I wanted to do that because I used to recommend books to people. And I wanted to get a little money for my recommendations. And I couldn't do it because I was a resident of North Carolina. Anyways, the um, so my awesome thing of the week is the Microsoft Band. Uh, it, it, add it to the list of various wearables that have come out over the last uh, year. Microsoft announced it probably a month ago at this point. Um, they announced it at ten thirty at night. And they were like, "Here it is," and it is a cross-platform wearable, so it works with iOS, works with Android, works with Windows Phone. Um, all of the fun features of it are with Windows Phone. So uh, Cortana, replying to text messages, replying to emails, and all of that stuff, that all works with Windows Phone. But if you want it as a uh, pretty advanced Fitbit and a notification system and also be, have the ability to pay for Starbucks with it, because you can do that, um, you can use it with iOS and Android. Now, the fun story behind this is that I was at the mall, and uh, in Pittsburgh, Ross Park Mall has the Microsoft kiosk in uh, in the middle of the first floor. And I saw it, and I went, oh, look, they have the Microsoft fan. I want to go take a look at this. So I'm at the mall with my wife and my son. He's sleeping, so it's just, you know, hey, daddy wants to have a little nerd time. So we go over to the stand, and we're taking a look at the Microsoft fan, and my wife puts it on. And she goes, oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, I can pay for Starbucks with this? Yeah. What, can I get my text messages on here? Yeah. Can I reply? Uh, no, no. You have to have Windows Phone reply. Oh, okay. Can I get my emails on here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Can I reply? No. You got, in order to, it's a one-way street for iOS, a two-way going back if you have Windows Phone. She goes, oh, okay. I want this. And I went, wait. Wait, what? And uh, so she she wanted the Microsoft Band, so uh, I decided to buy it. It was uh, two hundred dollars, uh, which is a bit much, but from uh, in relative terms to the proposed prices for the Apple Watch, it's like half. Uh, all of the Android Wear watches are in the two, like you can get some of them for two hundred, but they only work with Android. They don't work for, with iOS, which is what she has. Um, so she wanted it, and I asked her why she specifically wanted it. And she said, well, um, 
I don't want to be on my phone all the time because when I'm on my phone, then Andy, my son, wants to get on the phone and play his play games and that sort of stuff. And she's like, but I still want to be able to see that somebody texted me or see my calendar, which you can still do with iOS. And so she bought it, and she's really liked it. It tracks uh, sleep because uh, it uh, you wear it when you're sleeping. Uh, so it tracks your sleep and your restful sleep. Uh, tracks steps and heart rate. It has a heart rate monitor. Tracks uh, UV exposure because there's a UV sensor on the top of it, which is kind of weird because that's nothing I've seen on a wearable before. Um, and that then led to uh, my wife experimenting with uh, other phone OSs. So she wanted to see, okay, well, I want to see this with Cortana. I want to see this with replies. So I bought a Nokia Lumia 635, which is the AT&T LTE prepaid Windows phone. So she, as a non-geek, non-nerd person, is trying a new phone OS. Wow. Which is amazing. Because of her fit band. Yeah. So... <laughs> Yeah, because of the Microsoft Band. So the Halo device was the Microsoft Band, which wow. worked with iOS. And then she went, "Well, I want, I want to try. I want to see what the full, what what the full, full capabilities of this thing is." So she bought the Microsoft Band. So we bought the the Nokia Lumia. Thanks, Best Buy, for that Black Friday deal. I paid forty dollars for that phone. Oh wow! Unlocked, not on contract. Wow. So I don't feel like I've lost anything. Is it is it a nice uh, phone for, for for response to Windows? Yeah, I mean, when you consider them, so it's retail, it's a hundred. Okay, I got it for forty. Oh, that's not bad. So it's a hundred dollar phone. Okay. I'll just say that. So there's no front facing camera. There's no flash on the camera. The camera itself is not very great. The screen is uh, rough compared to a retina screen on an iPhone. She has an iPhone, she had an iPhone or still has it, but she has an iPhone 5S and she went to a hundred dollar prepaid phone. So yeah, there is a step. Wow. Down there. <laughs> I mean, I'm curious to see how that, how that um, goes then. Her, her response, her response to the windows, uh, the windows phone app store is this is pure garbage. <laughs> <laughs> It was amazing because she said it, not me. Well, I didn't it, say it. I didn't. You know, I, I've been poking around the, the app store because I'm like, I, I, I should get some. I have a Windows 8 laptop with a touchscreen. I, sh I should dive in there a little bit and see, you know, what, what I can find. And and it is garbage. It, it, like, there's so many fake apps in it there. Is, it is. It, it's, it's all the same problems I have with the Google Play Store. But worse but worse. <laughs> so the problem with the Windows Phone App Store is that because I, like, I don't know what the curation level is. So uh, I'm thinking about the what I call the I call it the curation level. I, I just made this up just now, but the entire thought process behind that is you have um, Apple's curation level where. You have to submit an app to Apple, and Apple has to review it, and it unless it gets reviewed and processed, it doesn't go into the App Store. And I think, and I, I could be entirely wrong on this, Google people, Android developer people, tell me I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that you have, it's less stringent to get into the Play Store and far less stringent to get into the Amazon Store. So there's still a sort of kind of review process, but not much of one. And I'm pretty sure windows phone is in that same realm where they just want to get apps into the store. Um, the problem is some of the major third party services are not there for windows phone. Like, uh, in her words, uh, Pinterest, this was her. She was like, Oh wait, you don't have Pinterest. What do you mean? You don't have Pinterest. I thought everybody had Pinterest. No, only iOS and Android have Pinterest. Um, and but if you go into the Windows Phone app, in the Windows Phone App Store and you search for the word Pinterest, twenty five results come up, and they're using Pinterest logo, and they'll say the word Pinterest as the name of the app. Wow. This is one terrible, two a wild mess of copyright infringement. But no one bites on it. But nobody's cleaning it up. And and, and, and if you look at the the mark, you know, 
I, I, I just just for the heck of it, I, I, I typed in Pinterest to the App Store on Windows 8, for instance, and I got Pinspiration, Lucky Pin, Pinspiration Pro, Client for Pinterest. OK, um, and, and, and some other stuff from there. Yeah, n- nobody's going to clean something like this up. And, and when you have a problem like that and what was I looking up? I think I was looking up a WWE Network app see if, just to see if they had one um, just for something cleaner, because I actually have an issue where if I go to WWE Network, it tells me to install the app. I don't know. It thinks I'm on a Windows phone, I guess. Um, and there's so many BS <laughs> WWE things in the store. Let me see if I can pull it up here. I, unfortunately, I don't have this one set up for for display right now. But there's WWE. There there is a WWE app. It doesn't really do much. I think this is a legit one too. And I think it just like spouts the news. Uh, so and that's it. Um, but if you go in, there's plenty of other BS ones. WWE Viz, WWE's news updates, WWE Divas, that's not by them. Uh, WWE news updates, this goes on and on. WWE John Cena, oh man. Um, let's see, here's one, a Dwayne Johnson fan app. What the hell? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it gets ugly. And um, Somebody's a big fan of Dwayne Johnson. And and, 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 and couldn't you say, it, like, probably... And that's the problem. The, the biggest app store right now is probably the Windows App Store, because it's Windows. Mm, I, I don't think from, I mean, uh, from a potential user base. Yeah. Yeah. It's the Windows App Store. Yeah. Yeah. I have not usability. A, from an actual, like. Because, uh, because yeah. I really think, uh, sorry, I, I think we have a little bit of the classic hotel delay here. So, um, but I, I think, um, well, uh, it's not, it's, it's, it's made worse by the Bluetooth headphones. Oh, probably a little bit. Um, but I, I think you're right. Not everybody's maybe ado- adopting the app store, even if they did upgrade the windows eight and there's, I, there's probably more windows eight machines out there than, than, than Macintosh, of course, just because it's windows. That's how it rolls. But you're right. It, people are using their windows laptops and everything like they did before. They're putting the same stuff. They're putting their office and probably not much else. Or they're going out to the manufacturer, like the developer's site and Ugh. downloading it directly from there, and they're Ugh. not going through the worse. actual like they're not going through an app store to go get it. Which is even worse. There was a discussion I was just listening to about the app stores that come on Android phones. It, it guys, if you get an Android phone, I my my problem oh. is my problem is not with Android phones. My problem is with the manufacturers of Android phones. Your Samsungs, your I think LG is pretty clean. Uh, your your HTCs, your whoever else. Verizon is another culprit in this. If you have an app store that is not the Play Store, don't just don't bother. It's just going to be headaches. I almost want to say don't do the Amazon store because you have to do a funky permissions workaround in order to get it to work. Um, but unless of course you have a Kindle, then that's a little easier. But um, I don't know. It's an issue. But anyways, we digress. So is there anything else you wanted to touch on for the band, the app store, or anything else before we move on? Um, the band is pretty cool. Uh, Windows Phone is pretty cool. Um, it started giving me the, uh, the I want to try something new uh, uh, feeling. Like, okay, I've got an iPhone. I've got an iPhone 6. And my iPhone 6 is real cool, but I'm interested in trying something new. Uh, I have a Nexus 7 tablet. It's running the, the, the Android 5 Lollipop, which is really, really cool. Um, I would like to try it on a phone, uh, but the, the problem is, is that I don't want to um, I don't want to burn an upgrade. Yeah, and so buying a out of contract good Android phone kind of stinks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I almost bought the One Plus One. Almost uh, the problem with the One Plus One is that uh, it is a giant phone. It is a five point five inch screen. I don't want to go bigger than my iPhone, which is four point seven. This is the six. Um, I don't want to go any bigger than that. It this is big enough. I don't want a. I don't want a tablet in my pocket. I don't think that's a cool thing. I don't like it. I don't think it, I think it's dumb, really. Uh, 
so I, I'm interested in getting there, but the issue is that the Nexus 6 is a 6-inch phone. So the, like the newest flagship Nexus phone is huge. The Nexus 5 is a 5-inch screen, which I'm fine with because it actually is generally the same physical dimensions as an iPhone 6 because it doesn't have the, um, it doesn't have the chin and forehead. Uh, so if you would like to look, the, uh, this bit up here and this bit down here, it doesn't have those. So it actually is a bit smaller than a 5-inch phone you would think would be compared to an iPhone 6. Um, so I, I've thought about it. The problem is, is that I don't see anything that is necessarily a a good fit for me because I would like to have a good camera to take pictures of my kid. And uh, the iPhone 6 is camera, and I will say this as a fact, there is no better camera on the market in a smartphone than the iPhone 6's camera. Not the Lumia, not the, not the Samsung Galaxy S5, not the HTC One. The iPhone 6 is the best camera. That is not a question. Those are, ha those are facts. And it makes it really hard for me to look at another phone and go, oh, yeah, I'll take a step down in my, in my photography because I want some other phone. So that was, it, makes it, really, it makes it hard to do that. That was a little bit of the discussion when I was doing the video podcasting session. Like One of my things was <laughs> I didn't really get into detail, but it was kind of just say, hey, you have a phone. Lots of you have lots of you have an iPhone. You can make something right now. But then it was like with the caveat of uh, unless you have an Android phone, not to say that all Android phones are bad, but generally they don't have as good video pictures, etc. Uh, like we just uh, and then that, that's a fact, just like across the board. I've seen Android videos just look horrendous. And I'm sure if you have a higher end phone, it looks great. I'd like to see what Chachi's LG looks like, for instance. Um, but generally, I know his like videos he has sent me from previous Android phones have never really compared to whatever uh, equivalent iPhone I had at the time. Uh, so I don't know. Um, let's get to some more awesome. They, oh, go ahead. I've seen uh, I've seen other things with with Android cameras. They, every almost every single one of them, no matter how good the, no matter how good the device is, every picture looks washed out to me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's a camera thing. I don't know if that's an uh, uh, an app thing. I don't know if it's a. I don't know what it is. But uh, almost exclusively, they all look just washed out. Right. They right. don't have any sort of vibrancy to the color. That may, and maybe that's that's also in comparison to an iPhone, where maybe the camera and and Ch uh, not Chachi Rob would have a much better uh, yeah. input on yeah. the way that camera saturations are set. And I'm almost positive that it's a uh, that it's a it's, it's potentially an iPhone is oversaturated and the Android cameras are undersaturated and true middle like what you would see in natural light with your eyes is in it's in the middle. And so to some people that oversaturated look looks better. And to some people, that undersaturated look seems more natural. Right. So, right. I know that right now there's a light right here, yeah. and it is washing out my the my shirt. It is washing out me, and I look a lot lighter than I would look if you were. It's bringing just the color out. Through. It's really bringing the color out in your shot, actually. So, <laughs> um, all right, good. Yeah, you know, I, I think I, I know. I was talking about kind of rehashing what, something for an awesome thing. Um, but uh, but I do want to throw a shout out there. Marvel Unlimited is still awesome for ten bucks. They had a seventy five cent sale. I think it was just yesterday. Go double check that if you're listening to this right now today. It, it might be a week thing uh, for the seventy fifth anniversary. Um, but yeah, and this is an awesome ish thing. Um, but this is a phenomenon. I just realized as we were talking about Android phones that I've been seeing. Um, everybody has an Android tablet, dude. <laughs> Um, it, 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 and let me tell you my experience with this. Um, I, I was shown a, a relative of mine. I don't want to give it away for somebody's birthday present, uh, although I don't think any of them will listen to the show. Uh, now I think about it, but uh, showed me a tablet they picked up for 70, 80 bucks, probably on Black Friday. Um, somebody else I know just picked up a Sony, I think it's an Xperia tablet he was asking me on. I'm like, I. I don't know how, how well they are, so I don't know if that's a good pickup for you. Um, and even I, I, I saw my uh, my one uncle. Uh, he, uh, he works here in town. He's a, he's a, actually works with Duquesne Light. Uh, but he also has a band, like a bar band, that, that, he, that he's involved in. And, and, and his 
uh, families involved in. Uh, and uh, he was going through his music there at, at, at Thanksgiving on a tablet. And it was a full it was a full size like iPad size tablet. And I asked him what it was. He said it was an LG. And he was using um, uh, an app to orchestra, you know, uh, uh, arrange his music. So he has it on there and ready to go. Uh, he is a, he's a guitarist, so it had all the guitar you know licks and everything on there that he can you know kind of sight read as he goes you know just to check in on. Um, the Kindle Fire is actually I, I think they're selling a ninety nine version ninety nine dollar version of the of the Kindle Fire uh, again you know uh, probably underpowered compared to a lot of the other tablets. But I think this is pretty fantastic. And one, I think this is why iPad is really kind of floundering. Maybe not floundering is the right word, but I understand sales aren't as strong as they used to be. Um, but the accessibility of tablets, I think, is kind of become come into its own. And maybe it's diluted because we have all these touchscreen laptops anymore with Windows 8. Um, are, are you seeing this kind of flourish of, 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 of Android tablets? And that's kind of my awesome th thing is this kind of realization that Android tablets have just kind of, uh, become reachable by, by, it seems everybody. I, I think the issue, it, it's not so much an issue. That's a terrible word to say there. But <laughs> no, I think no, no. the, uh, I think the increase in the number, honestly, I think that the, the increase in the number of Android tablets is based around the fact that, that, like you said, they're cheap. Yeah. I, like, I saw a number of Black Friday deals for Android tablets that were under $100. Um, you're not going to get a good one. You'll get one that works. You'll get one, you'll be on the Facebook internet. Maybe check Twitter. Yeah, you're not going to be playing, like, I don't know, anything other than Angry Birds on this thing, you know? You're not going to be playing, like, Nova or, or anything high-end right. like that. Um, but, but, it, you know, for, for most people, like, well, I mean, I have, go, I have my Nexus seven and I got it for 170 bucks on eBay and it's the 2013 HD one for like the good one. And I don't necessarily know that I would want to buy an iPad mini. Like I see, I've gone and looked at the iPad mini. I go to the Apple store and I pick it up and I'm going, you know, this is nice. I gonna do I get like, the whole reason I sold my iPads the I had an I had an iPad 3 and so did my wife the first time around or I had I we both had the iPad ones we skipped the iPad twos got the iPad threes and then we realized we weren't using them they just didn't get used we weren't using them and I was like I don't need this anymore so we sold them I sold mine to a coworker and I sold hers on I sold hers on bad things and I just didn't want to use them anymore. And I went to, uh, and so I was, I was kind of like getting kind of not so much like the itch to buy a tablet. I really wanted to try Android. But I didn't want to pay $600 for a phone. So I ended up buying the Kindle Fire HD uh, for like 130 bucks at Best Buy. And I realized that uh, I couldn't hack it because the uh, nobody had actually unlocked the bootloader, and I'm not good enough at programming to pull that sort of stuff off. So uh, I, I basically went, well, uh, here's I have here's my Kindle Fire that I don't really want to use because I, I can't hack it to be an actual Android tablet. I bought it because it was cheap, not because I could actually do anything with it. Um, so I, I ended up uh, just kind of like letting it go and letting it kind of sit around for a while. And then I realized, oh, hey, look, we move. We don't have cable anymore, but this Kindle Fire has Netflix and it has Hulu and it has Plex. Oh, look, now I can run all of my TV through this. Here's a tiny TV that can go anywhere in the house. And I have my Nexus 7. And the only reason I have that is so when I'm traveling and I'm on the plane, I don't have to pull out my whole laptop or stare at my tiny, uh, stare at my tiny phone. Mm -hmm. To actually, you know, sit there and mess around on the internet, and the best part about tablets on planes when you got Wi-Fi, they show up as mobile devices, so it's like half the price. Um, it's true. I, I, the, 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 uh, that, that that's right. Because tablets it, it, are 
they're powerful enough. Mm-hmm. And, and even the ones I'm seeing there are like hundred dollars and blow. I'm looking at the six inch uh, HD fire they have for ninety nine dollars. Uh, the one that was shown to me, it was like a six seven inch, I think, and it was uh, and, and it had the same thing. These are quad core processors, one point five gigahertz processors, whatever that means in the line of mobile devices. I, I, that's nothing to sneeze at, you know. Uh, there, there's right. probably plenty of power on the hood to get your surfing, get this, get watch videos. Obviously, is probably the easiest thing. It's going to be, you know, probably the highest end that has to do, you know. Um, but the fact that like anybody can snack one of these it is pretty tremendous, and especially in a world where we're, uh, uh, you know, like, you know, I'm watching my sister with her bad Kyocera or whatever track phone, Android, oh my god, thing, you know, next to even my nephew's like iPhone four doing better than that um it's nice that they can pick something like that up and be able to 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 do that and not have a laptop sitting in front of them in front of the tv you know that's what i use mine for uh this weekend when i'm like pretty much taking a hiatus from i'm not gonna internet things because again if i have that laptop in front of me i will do lap type laptop type work no matter what i have on the tv no matter if it's thanksgiving vacation i'm going to sit down and start tinkering away at a website Right. That's just how I operate. So I make sure I have the tablet and then I can poke around in like Facebook, Pinterest, whatever. And, you know, that's my second screen, you know, and it's really nice. As far as getting an iPad, um, we talked about the last episode, like uh, uh, the the touch cast and, and, and some other things. I want an iPad for work. I want an iPad for video things. Um, I haven't seen as much on Android. Anybody mm-hmm. can tell tell me if I'm wrong about this. Obviously, the camera, God, the, the Nexus Seven camera is horrendous uh, compared to compared to other options. Uh, but it is like I want an iPad when I ha- I find a reason for an iPad for work. If I need a new teleprompter, if I need you know uh, you know if we're we're doing something like a baristas where we need to do a script share, uh, although those are probably on Android. Uh, again, there's just a nice community around the, the filmmaking. Uh, for iPad that I haven't seen yet in Android, and maybe it's something I just need to investigate uh, a, a little bit to discover uh, to see if it's out there. But, um, but I mean, that's my big kind of takeaway from from iPad over Android. But general use, long as people aren't doing anything crazy, uh, I recommend the Googles and and everything. I don't know how much they're tinkering with these things and putting, you know, who knows what on on uh, 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 these tablets. The Notes I hear good things about, except it's got a lot of weird software. You know, Katie loves it. So, I, I I don't know. It, it's it's interesting. I'm also thinking. Uh, I, go ahead. If you can, if you can, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Uh, I realize it's definitely like, good. <laughs> no, we we're going to be doing this uh, a little bit. Go ahead. No, you first. Uh, the Nexus the Nexus Seven is a fantastic tablet. The 2013 version is fantastic. It's light. It has a really good screen. It has a Retina class screen, which you can't really say for most of the Android tablets, uh, except for some of the Galaxy ones. And even then, the notes, the notes, especially in the seven inch uh, range, are really hit or miss. I honestly don't know how they got Asus to make the Nexus Seven for two twenty nine, brand new. Yeah, I don't know how they did that. You know what blew me away? Um, the, uh, you- I, I would say that the from a Google from a general use general use Android tablet, you're probably fine. Can we discuss a, a rumor that's been poking around here? Oh. The iPad Pro? Oh, wait. Is this is this a rumor that's actually happening? I mean, it was kind of a suspicion, but... There's been a lot of talk. There's been a lot of rumor talk that, like, Apple's developing an iPad Pro, and then out of nowhere, like... Out of nowhere. Uh, somebody dropped blueprints for it. What? Like this, uh, which is weird. That's not something that usually leaks, but it was like iPad schematics. Like Authens died to bring us this information. If you're listening to the Awesome Cast, you don't get that reference. Watch Star Wars. Um, <laughs> Bothens died to bring us this information, but it was it's 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 supposedly a 12 inch iPad, so it's bigger than the big iPad. And the idea is that you're going to be able to do like almost surfacey, like snap side, like 50% or one third windows side by side. Oh, wow. Um, I, 
I'm not sure how I feel about that. I've had the I've had this like thought in my head that I could go iPad only, and I, to be entirely honest, I probably could. Um, I just really like having all of my uh, my apps. Like right now, I'm running uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, four, fifteen apps on my laptop right now. I should probably not do that. I should probably close some of these things. Um, but it's a, uh, I see it. I see that it would be kind of cool to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily know if that's necessary. I'll tell you, I'll tell you who is necessary um, for, uh, uh, AJ. Uh, it's necessary for guys like Malengo. Um, understand Malengo has, you know, the, the Wacom, Wacom, Wacom tablets, uh, you know, that, that, that they draw stuff on. Uh, you know, that you can do a pen input directly into Photoshop, especially for him. He's a 3D animator or, or guys like, you know, the guys that do Penny Arcade, they draw on one of those tablets. Um, he dragged to the Pittsburgh Comic Con one time so he could do some live drawing. A, what was it, like maybe like a 20-inch monitor Wacom tablet to do his thing. That's the person you sell the pro to. You sell it to video professionals. You sell it to guys doing that, guys that want to do Photoshop with a pen, with their finger, something like that. Could you imagine paper on something that large? Um, and you get that size, and I know, and I haven't had much success. It'd probably be pretty fun. I mean, you, you, it gets to the point where you could do a Final Cut Pro Lite X on the iPad, I think. Um, because I mean, just looking at it, I haven't had a chance to have a newer yeah, iPad. But, like, I don't think that <laughs> it's okay. I don't think that fits. And Why? I don't, I think part of the issue here is that huh, I hate saying this cause it's not totally true. Cause there are plenty of people who have done this and proven this statement wrong, but do you really want to sit down and video edit on an iPad? Um, on the, 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 I have a 13 inch Retina MacBook in front of me right now. Uh -huh. And the 13 inch Retina MacBook, if you were to have, is is honestly not much bigger than that iPad Pro would be. Mm -hmm. But this has a quad core. Or I actually have the I, I have the i7, so I have a quad. It's not quad core. It's dual core with hyper threading. Anyways, I have a machine with 16 gigs of RAM, half a terabyte of flash, and a fairly beefy processor and a Retina class screen. And it has ports to load things in on. The iPad doesn't have that. No, but iOS but but doesn't support that. There, but I, I mean, it, it, it's not like I maybe want. They, maybe they do. Maybe they come out with iOS eight point two. Sure, sure, and they put more RAM in the thing because uh, the RAM's been 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 light on these things. But I'm not talking about replacing my my MacBook Pro, my my desktop editor with this thing. I, I mean, unless maybe it could be a workstation that that you know the iMacs and Mac Minis do now. Um, but I'm talking about like, this is something that you take on the road. I've, uh, heard, you know, case in point, uh, uh, some, some sites will go to say a CES in Las Vegas and they're dragging Mac pros, the old cheese grater towers with them. Now they got a little cubby thing they can take with them. That's a little easier. Uh, but they take a Mac tower with them to do all the daily video editing, the post that day. Now, could you imagine, I mean, you know, the, we, we talked about touch, touch cast last week. We're talking about like, she's walking around with a, a iPad air in a case that, so she can hold and, and put attachments on. Um, and she's filming and editing or live streaming right there on the fly. I think when you take something, you know, a bigger screen iPad, a more more power under the hood iPad, because you can do it with that size, um, I think that makes new workflows for power creators, because it's a creation device, it's not a consuming device. I want to say, uh, probably gonna, people are going to kill me for this one. Uh, Android is not a it is is seems to be more of a consumer device. Um, at least the way that the general public is going to get their hands on it. I don't think the people picking up their Amazon uh, Kindle Fires and their seventy-five dollar, uh, you know, seven-inch Android iPads are going to create as many cool things or have opportunities to as as you do if you picked up an iPad. And granted, holy crap, we're talking about two hundred dollars at least in in price difference here. Um, but 
these are the people that are going to be seeking something like that, the people that want to make things. And I think you're going to find a lot of interesting, just like with the iPad, you know, how many new workflows did the iPad bring out in people and creatives? Right. Um, which now gets mimicked. Uh, as a non as a non creative person, I don't know that answer because <laughs> I, I I'm not I, and I don't claim to be one. I, I honestly I don't claim to be a, a fancy time uh, creative person. I am a I am a glorified office worker, and I will say that proudly. But for me, this is less about. I, I'm I'm interested to see this because let's let's consider this. Let's let's consider the product line here, right? iPad Mini starts at $299. Retina, the Retina iPad Mini 2 is $399. The Retina iPad Mini 3 is $499. The iPad Air starts at $499 and goes all the way up to $829. Mm -hmm. That iPad Pro is slotting in at $800. No oh, question. Certainly. iPad certainly. Pro is coming in at $800 at a minimum. But depending on what you do. And then but depending on you start what to you add do. some things in. Yeah, yeah. And you consider it versus like, like a let's, MacBook let's Air. Let's add this in. You add in anything, you're, yeah, you're bumping up against the MacBook Air line now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and heck, you're bumping up against the Retina MacBook Pro because the Retina MacBook Pro is twelve ninety nine. So you're starting to fit into this like weird, like is it a tablet? Is it not a tablet? Is it how how far can you push iOS? Because mm -hmm. iOS doesn't. iOS can has the ability to do multitasking, but it's built around crazy long battery life. It is not built around, I'm going to run the most stuff possible, yeah. and I don't care about battery yeah. life. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and we have had, had cases where we've had giant Androids. There is a, a computer, an all-in-one computer, all-in-one computer, or just a giant tablet that's like 20 inches at Best Buy. That's just android maybe we're getting to this point where that ipad becomes a dockable uh, workstation you know maybe we we get more features in ios 9 when this thing comes out ios 10 do you think they're going to start adopting like a new naming scheme do you have a feeling we're going to get like cats or something soon with ios maybe i like ios gecko maybe no. i don't know uh, no, they'll keep going with the numbers they'll keep going with the numbers i'm interested to see what happens when they get to ios 10 though um but the, the question then becomes, okay, right now the, the iPad does not have mouse input, not with Bluetooth. There are some apps that allow you to do it. There are, uh, I forget, there's one of the, there is a remote control, like computer remote control, like VNC type of thing that allows you to use a mouse with it, with a, like a Bluetooth mouse. And there are jailbreak things that allow you to use a Bluetooth mouse. It's capable of doing it. How many people want to do that? I know for a fact that I do not want to reach up, and I was talking with a customer today about this. I don't want to reach up and touch my screen and then go back to typing and then reach up and touch my screen and then go back to typing and then reach up to my screen. I love it. If it on a laptop I like being basis, able to go to my track I love pad. it on a laptop. I love it on this Windows 8 laptop. I just wish I had more power under the hood to do things with it. I wish it was a Mac. Um, but no, I, I, I think I think in certain cases, like, I, but I, I know I'm a special case. I love being able to reach over here during a show and move this thing and move a screen a little smoother than I could with a mouse uh, to share it, you know, in, in Wirecast and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I, I you know, it, it's a different use case, but you know, it, it's nice you have that option, I guess. Um, I mean, why couldn't? I, why, why couldn't I? I really think you're going to start seeing that evolution of iOS if they go this direction. You'll, you'll see that evolution of iOS. You'll see that evolution of, of the hardware. And you'll see that evolution of add-ons. You know, I mean, everything is already getting all-in-one with iMacs. This is just going to end up being a smaller ios -y iMac. You know, we're converging. We're seeing that in, in, the, in the OS. I'm interested. To, I, I, I'm interested to see. I don't think they're going to add touch to OS 10 or OS 11 or whatever it is that they decide to do. I don't think they're going to do that. I think they add. I think they add mouse capabilities to iOS. Mm -hmm. I do. Um, I know that it's a touch interface, but if you're going to go into full blown pro things, ask Microsoft how uh, touch works out for them. It doesn't. 
It works. The Surface Pro, by the way, I have a deep, deep lust for the Surface Pro. Oh, do you, me too. I do. Me too. I just cannot justify paying. I want. I want a Surface Pro. It, it, it's a Surface Pro or uh, or or. By or the way, a somebody Mac has Air. actually. Somebody has made a Surface Pro 3 Hackintosh. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm, I'll, I want it real bad. But anyways, so that, I mean, there's that. There's the, there's, where do you, where do you fit in here? Where do we, where do we take iOS versus where does it fit with Mac OS X? Do you add touch to the Mac? Do you bring legacy legacy input devices to iOS, how do apps start to play with that? Because right now, the fact that we just got extensions is like a bit of a like a tip of the hat to like, hey, I have a thing over here in this app and I want to use a thing over here. I want to use something from this app on the thing that I'm creating over here. Like, I don't think iOS is there yet. And I think that it's going to – I think it could get there. I don't think there's anything wrong with it getting there. But it is going to be tough for it to do that. And there are certain things and certain workflows and certain things that people do on their desktop that they don't necessarily do on iOS. And iOS would require a, like foundational changes to support that. And I don't necessarily think that, that, that those workflows are going to kind of like work their way around those loopholes – or not loopholes, but work their way around those hurdles to get to get to do what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And it's I, I see the workflow like I could take the iPad into the field and I could shoot video with it and immediately edit it and immediately upload it all in one device right there. But that doesn't necessarily turn into oh hey here is a profit load of consumers that are willing to get jump out there and get 12 inch iPads because you know, Apple's no, not no. going to produce it. If no. It's only going to be for a select few people. It, it, it's a super niche thing. It, it, this is the, so it will be the, it, have, it'll uh, be the Mac pro of iPads. Super special case for the professionals yeah, except, that don't know, the, that, that, that the don't iPad, know they need it yet. The Mac pro has, yeah, but the Mac pro starts at three grand. <laughs> <laughs> there's a little bit more room in there there's a little bit more profit room to say yeah. like oh yeah this is our niche market but it's three grand yeah sure uh, I, I, what if way, you have try and build, hey, try hey and go, go what on if you end. have a $1500 iPad Pro 20 inch no. I see it no go, go to Best Buy no go to Best Buy there is a <laughs> Windows tablet made by Dell and it has a stand, and it is an 18, I think it's an 18 or 20 inch tablet. It's like, it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It is this enormous tablet. It's like holding a small TV. And it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, you can swipe. I'm like, why do I want to swipe on but this But that's like, I want to, I want to throw a, a, a shoulder swiping on this thing. Oh, <laughs> let oh, me swipe that, through my pictures. That's even more fun uh, with the delay, too. Uh, um, all right, on that point, this is a lot of fun, but I do want to get to a couple I, other sure. things here. <laughs> uh, first from the chat, hey, Wheels uh, has Wheels has an awesome thing of the week. Uh, you know, we've had him on the Wrestling Mayhem show before, and you've heard in the background uh, when the, uh, the the police scanner, he, I mean, he works at, uh, helps out the fire uh, volunteer fire department down there. Uh, but uh, he he called out the Home Patrol One Simple Program Scanner. Uh, it's used by public safety, aircraft, military, weather spotters, and more. You can check that out. It's on. It's by Uniden. I you've seen, I'm sure, many of their electronic devices okay. and Radio Shack. Uh, retails for four ninety nine, but I think I saw it for three ninety nine uh, on Amazon when I was doing my quick search for it to check it out. Um, Alex Cars actually mentions uh he's his awesome thing of the week is how many times it got mentioned on twitter because he thinks my hoot suite was broken no no we're trying to do more tweets to kind of help people 
you know, find things on the show. And you got tagged in it, so hopefully you retweet it and share it with your friends who maybe discover the show. Also, it works really That's good. That's how social media works. That's how social media works there, young Alex. Um, so, um, no, it works really well. I mean, we, you know, that that is how social media works, and that's one of the things that we try to do. Uh, like, we talk about how many startups and apps and companies and devices, and, you know, if you get, re- if you, if you, if you use their Twitter when you're putting, you know, when you're putting out and letting people know about what's going on in the show, it kind of gets a response usually if they're good at social media too. Um, and, and hopefully we've gotten a lot few viewers. I, I saw a, a, a few more views uh, over on the YouTube. It was what I've been directing people to trying to uh, uh, drop them in at wherever we're talking about certain things on the, on the site, on the show. Uh, Cause if you guys don't know if you're on YouTube, uh, you can actually, where you go down to link, you can click this little box that says start at, and you notice I have the little times usually in the description. Uh, so we do a start at like where we started talking about the iPad Pro, right? And uh, we link that out and somebody clicks on that. They hopefully go to the video and they start up exactly where we're talking about the thing that we uh, told them to check out. Instead of finding it in an hour's worth of content. Uh, it's been it's been. It's been interesting. I'm te- I'm testing between that and testing between like having clips on YouTube and seeing what works out, what brings people to the show, what do people like uh, for discovery. So I, I'm a little little social media inside baseball there that we've been working with. Um, Add a quick cast. We've been called in the chat room. That's wonderful. Uh, anyways. We uh, well first, hey, big shout out to Slice on Broadway, uh, feeding our podcast in studio guests. We had Malengo out here earlier for the Rambling Movie Minute, and those that usually join us here on the Awesome Cast. Uh, so go check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. Mm-hmm. Great pizza in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. What are you? What are you doing? A theme song over there or something? Um, and also Carnegie PA down. No, I'm 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 just having. I have tears of infam- in, of unfathomable sadness because I don't have Slice on Broadway right no, now. No, you don't. And you I'm don't even 500 live. 500 miles from you, Slice, and I know you, Slice. <laughs> like so much, Slice. Go, to, go check them out. They're on Facebook, Slice on Broadway. They're also on Twitter as well. I think it's PGS underscore Slice or Swip those. I forget which one it is. Uh, but go let them know that you learned about them on the awesome cast. So let's touch on a couple of these stories here uh, that have been uh, tickling my brain for the last week, at least. Uh, first of all, we, uh, we, we discussed this a little bit because apparently Mad Mike's friend was uh, uh, an operator of this thing for a day. Uh, so there is a giant new Android billboard in Times Square. Uh, if you're a ti- if you're a New Yorker, you probably know this already. Um, and apparently, it, 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 you know, a giant LED crazy thing, you know, like you expect. Um, and this is actually, there's some pictures here. Uh, if you guys are on video of them building it, uh, up the side of this building it's several stories tall as these things get when when you know um but uh apparently you can actually like your your android avatar that i believe you make on one of their sites here uh you can have it controlled on the billboard <laughs> so it's a giant interactive billboard uh, this says right here, create your character, and you could be on the big screen at androidify.com. If you guys haven't checked that, it's a fun little site uh, to make your little Android dude or, or dudette. Um, Google's really... <laughs> there's a Whoopi Goldberg Android. <laughs> um, Google really pushing wow. this. Uh, uh, pushing this like Android for all of us. Uh, you know, signs saying and her and him and us and them and you. Um, this is the biggest mass cross branding I think I've ever seen for Android. Um, they're getting some marketing muscle behind this. It's not just like the thing that's in the phones. It, they're not leaving it to Verizon for the horrible droid uh, uh, marketing that they've done over the years. Right. Uh, they're, they're, they're controlling a little bit more of the message. And I think this is, this is good in general for Android. Uh, maybe this is I don't know, partially the lead to why everybody's walking around with these things these days or, or help it or help, you know, guys like me have a better attitude about it, I guess. Um, I, I don't know. What do you think about this new, uh, advertising side that, that they're doing with Android? Uh, since, uh, I watch, uh, I, I watch live sports 
on the Watch ESPN app. And uh, the Watch ESPN app has like four commercials and like three of them are these androids, everybody together, but not the same. And it's like, oh, hey, here's like, the, here's the tall dude with the tiny phone and the tiny dude with the giant phone. And you can have whatever you'd like to, but it's all Android. I, I'm i with you, Google. I think you have a great marketing idea. I think you need to tell your other manufacturers to not do what they do to your phones because all together but not the same means uh, exactly that. If I buy a Samsung phone, it doesn't look or potentially operate like an LG phone. And an LG phone doesn't operate like a Motorola phone, and a Motorola phone doesn't operate like an HTC phone, so on and so forth. That's the thing that drives me nuts about Android. Stock Android is really, really good looking. And I'll say that out loud. Everything, every skin, every UI change that every manufacturer makes for Android is awful looking to me. Awful. Bless you, Motorola, mostly because you got bought by Google for basically leaving it the heck alone. But Samsung ruins it real quick. They're still trying to run the same look that they've been running on their phones since like Android, or since Android 2.0. It just looks the same to me, and it looks like crap because Android has come a lot farther than that with their with their design, and it's just not there anymore. The I appreciate the fact that they're trying to make it so that it's a good marketing campaign. Everybody is different, but all we can all be we can all do things together, and it's uh, I really like it in comparison to Apple's like everybody is one and the same. You know, you buy an iPhone, and this uh, this iPhone six runs iOS eight just like my coworker's iPhone six and his co and his friend's iPhone six. They're all the same, and they all run the same OS, and they all look the same. It's just have we just all have different backgrounds and different icons, but that's about it. They all run exactly the same. Um, Android, you could do all kinds of goofy things to it. So I, I like it. I like that this is what you can do uh, with 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 Android, and it's a, it's a good marketing campaign. I'm not sure about a billboard in Times Square, <laughs> mostly because I think Times Square is an awful place, but we all move on. It's the mark of, of, of marketing arrival. Like a balloon in the Macy's Day Parade used to be for brands. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, have, I have so many not great thoughts about Times Square. I just... There's too many people. Nobody wants to move. Everybody wants to stare and look at the giant ads. There's nowhere to go. Well, I'm reading. I'm also oh, reading God. in this Times that is awful. it's so large that all of the uh, all the uh, unlicensed superheroes begging for money uh, had to move down a block. Well, good. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I have no. I have no sympathy for the unlicensed superhero <laughs> people that you could take pictures. Especially of. weird Ooh, Elmo. You the Spider-Man costume. Awesome. Yeah. Oh. Um, in other news, so, tell me about Google Glass. Let me tell you about Google Glass. It's not dead yet. It's not dead yet. It's not. You may think it's dead because it's just sitting there for fifteen hundred dollars a pop over on the Android store. God, what is happening with this tuft of hair? What's going on with my headphones? I'm sorry. I'm having a wardrobe issue in the middle of the show uh, that most of you listen to on audio. Uh, but of course, they've had the Explorer edition for a while. Apparently, the chip that's in there they can't even get anymore. Um, or at least in limited quantities. The battery's been horrible. It looks goofy on your face. Well, they're going to have a new version in 2015, according to this report in the Wall Street Journal, because they usually get things right. Uh, apparently, Intel is going to have an Intel inside the new Google Glass. Hopefully, this means uh, a, you know a smaller, uh, you know, low-powered chip. Um, it, it said it's going to likely be uh, the one that, that powers the uh, Intel's Mica bracelet, uh, which is uh, out of Intel's new devices group set up last year. And uh, hey, if that turns into something that helps out uh, Google Glass, great. Uh, but I think you know certainly they have a big hill to climb here uh, for the stigma and everything. I, I think they're doing the right thing. Uh, you know, much like we're talking about the Mac, the idea of an iPad Pro. They're really, I think, targeting uh, special cases and and industries, healthcare, uh, industrial, uh, 
uh, you know, you know, other 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 kind of areas, more than just I'm going to walk into a bar with this thing, because I don't think that's going to be the case for a long while. I think I think eventually this is going to be eventually down the road. This is going to be I'm wearing these glasses and you can't tell it's Google Glass. Except for maybe, like, maybe there'll be a bump or something. Maybe this will just be a, a little thicker around the frame or, or something like that. That's what we're going to get to. Hopefully, I don't know, maybe 10 years we can get to that. Uh, this is a first step. And they've, they've said, even the people that go you know, first behind Google Glass says that, they said that the, the, the goal is to have a contact lens in the long run. Um, hey, I'm good when you get to the glasses, yeah. personally. Because uh, I'm not, I'm not doing the contact lenses. So I, I don't know. What are your thoughts on this and, and the potential uh, uh, shift here for Google Glass in the future? They need something, certainly. I, I think that it's, uh, it's interesting. Um, I, I'm interested. To, uh, they're going to have to have some leaps, significant leaps in battery technology. Um, I mean, I guess you could put like all of the camera or the camera and the CPU stuff over in this side, and then you could do like the battery in this side, maybe, um, and then run like wires through the frame here. I guess. I, I think the problem here is that Google. It's creepy, and it's it's really creepy. If people don't like having like imagine if you just held your phone like this mm -hmm. at all times okay okay like okay wait a, minute, wait, a texting, wait a minute wait a minute but you so, only ever texted like it looked like you were tech like taking pictures so we have wearables on our wrists and everything I know. A, 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 what if you had google glass but it didn't have a camera pointing at everybody it still looks funny Still looks I, I would like to see. <laughs> but it looks funny. Away a but I would bit. like to see. Here's what I would like to see. Okay. This is my. These are my glasses, right? Look, I don't know the glasses. On. I would like just a tiny little window, just right here, right, or maybe here, and then that way I could like see notifications and that sort of stuff. I don't necessarily see the point, um, but at the same time, I'm not. I'm not Google's target audience. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's a wearable that's in an it's in a wearable that's in a very conspicuous place. It is. Like if I have a watch on, I could do this and cover it up. If I have the the Microsoft Band or the Fitbit or whatever, it's on my wrist and it's here, and I can cover it with a sleeve, and I can also, you know, oh. it's at my side. When you have the Google Glass on, it is right here right on your face and that's difficult for so that's difficult for people now and we're youngish yeah and it's weird to us and maybe it won't be so weird in the future if they actually integrate it completely into a pair of glasses exactly and then you won't then you really won't know who has it uh i, I think yeah the biggest thing is this is a device that hasn't updated right it hasn't updated form wise in three years that's an eternity Go pick up an iPad from three years ago. Go pick up an iPhone from three years ago. The iPhone from three years ago is the iPhone 4S. You know, look at how far that's come. And the Google Glass yeah. has not, from from prototype that we saw Sergey Brin walking around with to them jumping out of the airplane at Google I.O. the one year to what I picked up a year and a half ago and then had replaced at the beginning of the year because they did update the internals and let us have one um, uh, updated to the 2.0 version. Uh, software has developed greatly uh i just heard it. i didn't realize this i haven't put my glass on in so long because i took them off these glasses for a wedding uh we did in october i just haven't bothered to put them back together uh because this is my only glasses and i'm not going to attach them to it because I, I you know th th that's all i have um you know there just needs to be a little bit more done uh i i i'm as an explorer i'm done exploring and it was nice but you know yeah. now i'm really considering uh my my mobile wise you know I, i'm considering pick up a pebble watch to be completely honest even with the advent of apple watch I, i'm i don't think i want apple watch 1.0 i think it's going to be severely limited for 350 dollars maybe i'm just still burned from the 1500 i spent last year um but uh 
I feel like the pebble is at the right thing. It's mature for what it is. Uh, and uh, it, it will be the thing that gets me used to having a thing on having a thing on my wrist again which i haven't worn in over 10 years so i I haven't worn a watch since i had a flip phone i I think the difference here with i think the difference here with google glass is that the difference between google glass and pebble are, are they're they're not doing the same things um i would like to i would like to get a smartwatch uh, I, I, I am in on the Apple Watch, as uh, as we noted uh, a while ago uh, on the original show. I wasn't entirely sure. I'm a bit more sure now after seeing the Microsoft Band that mm-hmm. uh, that's something I would like. Uh, part of my problem with the Microsoft Band is that it is really, really thin, and so you can't actually wear the watch with the f- watch face on the outside of your wrist because you can't look at your wrist that way. You have to wear it. If you want to wear it and look at it normally, you have to wear it on the inside of your wrist. That's how they designed it. Um, the Apple Watch, I'm a bit more in on uh, because it is, it is a normal watch. It has Apple's interface. It will interface well with my phone, um, and it looks nicer. I, I think that's part of it. I, I would like to get that and, and maybe put it on like a, a nice leather band, get like the aluminum, the base model. Uh, they have said the watch kit has already come out and they have said that they're going to, um, that all of the like initial apps will still have to run mostly on the phone and just push screen updates over to the watch, which is good because they don't know the battery life yet. Um, but I think the, uh, the, and they did say the native apps are coming with potentially the next version of the SDK, if not a later one. Um, I, I'm interested to see where that goes. And I think you're right. I think going 1.0 might be a bit much. Um, because who knows, maybe they come out with a new version and it's, you have to replace the, you can't just replace the watch base. You have to replace the whole thing. Um, I'm interested to see it. I'm holding out for it before I make a like like watch wearable type decision. I do want one, um, but I don't think it's necessarily something that we're going to do. Just jump it out of the game. So. Yeah, yeah, it, it's touchy, and especially uh, you're you're seeing Android Wear dropping like a rock. There was a suspicion: what if Android Wear becomes iPhone compatible? You know, um, I, it, it's, it's interesting. I, it, 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 yeah. We're early. We're way early on this. Um, and as far as the Apple Watch, I don't want to be iPad, iPad 1 for this thing. Uh, iPad 1, if I would have gotten iPad 2, I would have still been using it and still be able to use most everything until like last year versus I got a 1. And it's kind of a we got two ones and they're kind of useless right now. Um uh, granted, how many years ago is this? How many iterations have they had? They have five, six of them since, right? Um, but I, I, hey, I moved. I moved my iPad ones when I had the opportunity. I <laughs> sold them quick. I got my money. Thirty-five bucks on Gazelle right now. It's not even worth selling. It just to have them as a screen for Netflix is worth more than that right now. Um, but I'll, I'll crack them and start, be, you know, being able to put more apps on or something like that uh, eventually. But it just kind of sits there on my keyboard dock on my desk, and I get my Facebook updates uh, right now. And the few iPad games that I have that I can't run anywhere else because I don't have another yeah. iPad. Um, yeah. But anyways, at that point, hey, great talking with you, AJ. Uh, I think we had a lot of great conversations, and hopefully it wasn't yes. too weird with the delay going on here. Um, guys, uh, uh, you can check us out. We're at awesomecast.net. You can join us here for the conversation in the chat room. Just like these guys having a great conversation about uh, you know jumping in with us and, and having a great conversation themselves, including Wheels, including Juggalo John, Andrew, Car- ah, Andrew, Alexander Cars out there in California, Chachi, Brother Sorg, and of course, thanks, intern Mike. Mike, 
Mike Allen at Mike Allen PR on Twitter that's been, um, of course, tweeting and doing show notes for us all night long. Please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio, wherever you like to listen to your video cast, podcast, however, however you want to say that. Uh, and of course, check us out on Twitter, uh, Facebook, and Google Plus if you want to communicate with us and let us know some stories that you're excited about. Tell us your awesome things for the week. We'll t- we'll talk about them on the shows, of course. Um, and with that, AJ, uh, where can people find you on the interwebs? Uh, you can go to virtualpotholes.com and read back some of my old worky type blogs. Uh, you can find me at, at AJ Kuftik on Twitter, where I tweet about worky things, uh, techie things, and uh, that, that's it. The, the, those are the two places to find me. Uh, follow me on those things. I occasionally, t- I, I occasionally tweet and talk about other things other than nerd stuff, but for the most part, it's mostly nerdy things. Um, and, and that's it. That's where you can go find it. Awesome. You can check out this and other great shows that we're doing. Uh, somebody once told us that all the podcasts we do are of obsessive of things we obsess over or that the people involved obsess over. And that's definitely true. We talk video games, movies, pro wrestling, even health. People are just people out there are obsessive about their health, right? That counts. Um, over at SorgatronMedia.com, PittsburghWrestling.com, where we uh, a lot of our productions are out on digital download and DVD. Sorgatron.com, where I have my Good Morning Podcast, where I do a four-day-a-week podcast. Talk about whatever the heck I want to. My wife just discovered it. Got to stop talking about her on that one. Anyways, uh, <laughs> anywhere else. Uh, but no, I, I talk Aww. about... Yeah. Yeah, I talk about tech things. I talk about family things. I talk about life things. Whatever is on my mind, it's my it's my vent for night, four mornings a week. Uh, so go check that out. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you to our awesome chat room. Uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. We're getting awesome. We're getting- This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out wrestlingmayhemshow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.